So I've received a lot of requests asking about reverse engineering, so I thought I'd start up a series talking about the different ideas and techniques related to reverse engineering. So in this video, I'm just going to go over some of the basics of reverse engineering, some of the main ideas towards why we're really doing reverse engineering and sort of the motivations behind the different tools and techniques that we're going to be talking about. And then in future videos, I'll talk about some of the different tools and show you some different techniques for reverse engineering, looking at things like Ghidra and Ida and learning how to actually decompile and reverse engineer applications. But before we start on to that, I want to talk a little bit about why do we actually care about reverse engineering and what sort of reasoning is there for reverse engineering as a concept already. So mainly reverse engineering is used in areas like security research, and it's a way of being able to understand a program when you're given just the binary of the program and none of the source code. And to understand why this is an important thing to be able to do, we can consider all the different situations where you might have this sort of thing happening. You know, suppose somebody develops some malware, you know, in these sorts of situations, you have just the executable. If you want to understand the malware to be able to protect your computers or network, you need to be able to understand how the malware works, and that will require you to do reverse engineering. So that's an important concept there. In addition, reverse engineering is very useful for exploit development. If you want to be able to find vulnerabilities and exploits in applications, one of the ways that you can do that is by reverse engineering an application to try to find different exploits, finding like buffer overflow locations and then being able to write exploits for those is going to require you to have some understanding of reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is a really cool concept because it dives into low-level programming at a very you know, intensive level of detail. So you're going to need to really understand low-level programming, and I'm going to walk you through all the different things that you're going to need to be able to understand reverse engineering. So we'll go for a really holistic approach here and show you everything that you're going to need to know to do reverse engineering, and then we'll do some good reverse engineering and get understandings of the different processes related to it. So just starting off with like something really simple, you know, if I have a C program here and the C program is very basic, right? It takes in some, you know, it just starts up, it prints out hello world, and then it just returns zero, right? Very basic C program. If I go ahead and compile this program, what will happen is you'll get a, a binary as a result, right? So when you compile this, you have two files. One of those files is our source code. One of those files is the binary. And the scenario that you're in with reverse engineering is this. If I close out of this and I just delete my source code and all I have is this binary, what I could do is I can, I can run this binary, right? And I can get an output. So the program runs, but I don't know how it runs anymore because I just deleted the source code. We'll just pretend that I didn't write it. So I have no idea how this program actually works. And my goal is how do I figure out how this program actually works? And one of the things that we might do is we might say, okay, well, what if I just open the program in Notepad? And you'll see that we just get a whole bunch of nonsense, right? This is impossible to understand. So we need some sort of technique of being able to take this binary and turn it into something that we can understand. And there's two main techniques that we can use for this. The first sort of idea that a lot of people would have is, well, can't you disassemble it? Can't you go from the binary to the source code again? And in some cases you can. If you're working with things like Java or C -sharp .NET type binaries where they are actually written for like a virtual machine, in those situations, you often can go back to something very close to the source code and actually completely understand it. So in those situations, doing things like reverse engineering is fairly easy. However, in a lot of situations like C programs, for instance, what happens is the compiler does a lot of optimization to the code before it creates the machine code binary. And because of those optimizations, Optimizations, it's actually very hard to go back to the actual original source code itself. All we can really do is approximate the source code. So we really have two main approaches. We can try to approximate the source code using tools like Ghidra, for instance, which do a very good job at getting us close to the source code, but won't give us a perfect representation of it. Or we can try to actually read the machine code to be able to understand what the program is doing and how it's doing it. So that's where the low-level assembly concepts come in. If we understand assembly, we can actually read that assembly code and better understand the program. In reality, the things that we get out of disassemblers are very close, but we're never going to get as good of a picture as the actual machine code itself. So using a combination of these two approaches, we can actually do a full reverse engineer to fully understand the application. So there you go. That's the general motivation, the idea behind reverse engineering. In the next number of videos that I create here, I'm going to walk you through the different processes. We're going to talk about all the different concepts that we need to understand in order to be able to reverse engineer programs. And then we'll actually do some reverse engineering and get hands-on with these concepts. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.